welcome to The Deprogrammer. This is your host, Ari Stone. In this video, I am going to be discussing the brain and some of its basic functions, aka neuroscience, and in particular as it relates to Corey Good and his publicly and legally claimed mental health issues. I am not a neuroscientist or medically trained doctor, so this is just based on my research of what is publicly available on the internet and my understanding of it at this time, along with my viewpoint of my research and observations. Additionally, an actual medical exam will need to be performed on Corey to determine if he actually has the medical conditions he legally and publicly claims. I personally believe he does have these conditions because of the current evidence I have that include my research and as is derived from observation of his behavior patterns over the past few years and the stories that he publicly claims and alleges as true to include his alien experiences with eight foot plus tall bluebirds. However, it will still need to be determined in a court of law if he actually believes he is having real alien visits or if he is just pushing a narrative for most likely a mind control purpose. His alien visits can be accredited to the mental health issues he publicly claims to have, along with the military deep state black operation programs he claims to have been in, notably to include SSP, Secret Space Program, MKUltra, and MyLab. It's going on all, all around us, all of us. You, me, people at home, we're all mind control. First, we have Corey Good's legally claimed mental health issues. During 2014, a former Texas employer of Corey Goods filed a stalking protection order against Corey to stop his harassment, threats, and defamation of the company on May 5th of 2014. Subsequently, on October 31st of 2014, the protection order was granted on behalf of Darling International. In the plaintiff's Exhibit C was the transcription of Corey Good's threatening YouTube video that led to the original request by Darling International for the protection order. In the YouTube video dated May 4th of 2014, Corey Good stated he suffered from complex PTSD, traumatic brain injury, and epilepsy, amidst him having his eye retinal detachment surgery issues. From this particular retinal detachment issue, Corey is known to publicly claim on and off of cosmic disclosure to have then been recalling having had a total of three 20 and back SSP or secret space program experiences, and that each subsequent SSP experience was worse than the prior with the things they had him doing and how he was treated. He was so traumatized by the recall of what he'd done in the last two 20 and back programs that he was extremely depressed and very suicidal. So much so, he claimed his alien friends visited him and had to take away and or suppress those memories from his conscious self in order for him to basically be able to function and live with himself day to day. Then, on Cosmic Disclosure, Season 7, Episode 28, Corey Good tells David Wilcock he has temporal dementia and aphasia. Here is the clip of Corey discussing his mental health with David Wilcock and the symptoms as a result of the programs he claims to have been in. Is there a limit to how many times you could send someone back in time before certain inescapable health consequences or other things would take place? Definitely, especially with the early technologies, such high electromagnetic fields are used that even when people that spend 20 years in the space program, being within those high electromagnetic fields, they have a lot of side effects. Uh, that temporal dementia, different uh, types of neurological issues, weird numbness. Um, there, I mean, there are a number of issues that occur from being inside those magnetic fields. Hmm. So, yes, if you're uh, sent in the, uh, using the technology especially that they used to use a long time ago, sending you back in time over and over uh, would be like being on, uh, w working in the engine room of one of these torsion drives. It's, you know, they wear these Faraday suits that are uh, like a metal mesh that go all the way over them when they're in these, mm. you know. So, yeah, the, it has a, 
it's very detrimental to the, the neurological system. So is there any contraindications for people's lifespan if they've been in the secret space program? Yes. Uh, usually the people that um, have either retired or have been gone through a 20 and back like myself, they have a lot of um, neurological issues for a while. Their quality of life tends to go down, 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 and they do not have the life expectancy uh, as the rest of the population. That's, some, that's a trade-off that they make, and uh, most of them knowingly make that trade-off. One of the things we described in a previous update is that you have had new information come your way about there having been more than one 20 and back program. So how does this new knowledge impact the question that's going on here, which is, is there a limit to how many times somebody could be sent back in time? Yes. <clears throat> that information was um, uh, relayed to me through Gonzalez when I was up getting uh, an examination on the Mayan craft. And they had actually repressed those two, two of the 20 pack memories from me when they first met me. Because I, when I had the eye surgery, when I had um, a detached retina that they said was basically the same as astronaut's eye, I had full recall of all three 20 and backs. And oh. I was uh, almost suicidal. It was bad. And then they came and assisted me by removing some of my emotional energy to some of the memories uh, of this 20 and back, and then uh, rebury the memories of the other two. The memories were not conducive to me uh, having a normal life. So given that you are a person who now believes that you've had three 20 and backs, that would make you, I guess, with a soul age of like 105 or something like this? Yeah, something like that. So how does that affect you in terms of your health and your functionality? It's definitely um, had side effects. I've had a number of surgeries because of neurological issues with my hands and forearms, which is common. Um, I'm starting to have uh, issues with memory recall a little bit, having, um, what is it, aphasia, where you like, all of a sudden you can't remember your normal words out of your lexicon. It's like, it's been erased. Sure. So yeah, there are a lot of different side effects that uh, I'm, I'm dealing with currently. Now that we've seen and listened to Corey's own public mental and physical health claims, along with some of his deep state black operation program claims, I'm going to begin dissecting them along with showing how they relate to each other, neuroscience, and advanced technologies, all of which are heavily and illicitly practiced in the deep black military and otherwise programs that Corey claims to have been in and that can cause the kind of mental health issues that Corey claims to have, but not necessarily in the exact way that he publicly tells the story. Very briefly, before I get into all of that about Corey, a teeny tiny bit about my background, and for those who want a little bit more about me and how I am connected with Corey, watch my introductory YouTube video on this channel. First of all, number one, I have never been in the military or otherwise deep state programs such as MKUltra, MyLab, or some such similar program, at least not to my conscious knowledge or conscious consent. Two, I am not some super ufology researcher or CIA project researcher or otherwise known peer or news reporter in the ufology or similar type communities. Three, most of what I research and then present is because I've seen it first in my dreams, know what to look for, and then find the waking state data or evidence that supports what I have already seen in dream visions. In some instances, I will have seen these things months or even years in advance, and there are many dream visions I can now point out and say, I emailed that dream vision to Corey during 2017 and for which I am in litigation to protect as my trade secrets, as knowledge about future events and information about people. Four, 
I've seen enough things occur now in waking states from my 2000 plus hand documented dream visions and some dated back as early as 2006 that I know basically what to look for in waking states, what to expect overall, how to read my dreams, connect them together and recognize who's visiting me in disguise and for what purpose. I won't explain all of that here as I discuss that in my book, Dreams, The Missing Text. For those interested, follow the Amazon link in the write up below. Five, I am looking forward to legally proving on the court record my abilities of seeing things first in dream states before they occur in waking states. Six, it seems my personal dream vision journey since 2006 is inextricably entangled with Corey Good, David Wilcock, and deep state mind control programs like MKUltra, MyLab, and Project Bluebird. Now we go back to Corey's legal and public health claims as they relate to neuroscience and the deep state mind control programs notably associated with the CIA. To recap, you'll notice with Corey Good's temporal dementia claims in the video and all his other mental or otherwise publicly claimed health issues, including his back issues, he tells them in such a way that people think he's traveled 20 years into the future with the secret space program or SSP. And basically, it appears he is romanticizing his mental and physical health issues, which are more likely a result of his MKUltra and my lab experiences as basically a lab rat type test subject. All of the symptoms Corey claims he has would be associated with the kind of research and experimentation heavily utilized in these illicit programs. However, as a likely highly successfully mind controlled subject, Corey tells his drug and electromagnetic field induced experiences as if they are space and time travel where he saw aliens and went on spaceships and went into the future and is back now and that he's whistleblowing on the SSP secret space program. Now, as you recall, he also stated he's experiencing a lot of side effects to include neurological issues, which are brain issues and weird numbness, which is a brain slash nervous system type issue. He claims that these symptoms are from being inside intensive magnetic fields that are used to send him 20 years into the future and bring him back again and at the exact same point in time that he left so he looks exactly like he did when he left, as though no time had passed at all. And he claims he did this three times. He also claims he sees eight foot plus tall bluebirds. So here's the general overview of what I think based on the physical evidence I currently have, which includes what I've seen and experienced in dream states or similar states with Corey, which is extensive, along with waking states with Corey and through my continued technical and legal research regarding this matter. I believe as stated prior that Corey is likely telling the truth that he has all the neurological and mental health issues he claims and that he is likely telling the truth in a fashion that he has been in the SSP program. However, here's the catch. I don't believe the SSP program is what he describes and leads people to believe it is, such as going 20 years into the future and back or seeing real aliens. I do believe that he is put inside magnetic fields and that electromagnetic fields are used to adversely impact his brain and nervous system, control his actions, and used to cause him to hallucinate his alien friends and notably his alien bluebird friends. To understand how this likely occurs, I'm going to give a basic rundown of the associated CIA programs and various patented publicly available technology that describes mind control type technology regularly used and publicly available so that everyone can see how they connect with Corey's publicly claimed mental health issues and neuroscience, which is a very big part of these programs. The first program we're going to discuss is CIA Project Bluebird. My main research at this time about Project Bluebird 
comes from publicly available documents on the CIA website and other websites that repost or discuss various CIA documents to notably include the Black Vault Dot com. I have provided links below for those wanting to research and read MKUltra and Project Bluebird documents for themselves. A key Project Bluebird document was declassified January 29th of 2004. Project Bluebird was a top secret 1950s CIA project working covertly with other departments of the military for mind control experiments that used science teams they called interrogation teams. The term interrogation team is important because Corey regularly states when he was taken for the SSP program at the age of 16 that he was regularly used in interrogation rooms. This is another story Corey tells publicly that I think is highly unlikely to have occurred in the way he tells it. He tells his interrogation room stories as him being there because he's an intuitive empath, reading aliens or humans in order to determine if they are lying. However, Project Bluebird used interrogation teams for research and mind control experimentation purposes. I extend a thank you to Randy Moggins of Off Planet Radio, offplanetmedia.net, for being the first to share with me that Project Bluebird is a subproject of MKUltra, which Corey claims to have been an MKUltra. Subsequently, in my research, I then came across the CIA documents that the Black Vault at theblackvault.com founder John Greenwald Jr. worked 20 years to obtain from the CIA via the Freedom of Information Act and publicly published online the 20,000 pages of these illicit mind control programs with the first influx of the documents being uploaded to the internet during 2004. These MKUltra documents clearly show Project Bluebird was indeed a subproject of the MKUltra mind control and personality splitting programs. Here is the basic rundown of CIA Project Bluebird. Project Bluebird is a CIA program to interrogate willing and unwilling subjects and to mind control them during and after the experiments. It was proposed that there be research teams that they called interrogation teams, and each team would be comprised of three people. One would be a doctor that was actually a psychiatrist, aka a shrink. The second, a polygraph, which was really their covert way of saying a hypnotist, although they did have a polygraph listed as an item to purchase in the proposal. And the third person was a technician. These interrogation teams working on the illicit Project Bluebird projects were labeled as top secret, eyes only, need to know, restricted, and were to use covert offices for experiments and research. These highly specialized interrogation teams would be respectively known as Project Bluebird. Project Bluebird also included training, experimentation, and indoctrination in the use of drugs and hypnotism. It was said this was being done for the collection of intelligence and information, to gather this information from willing or unwilling subjects, and they would use things like speech-inducing drugs, narcoanalysis, and hypnotism. Project Bluebird had covert contacts within many aspects of the government to include the CIA, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the FBI. Speaking of the FBI, Corey Good is also said to have worked for InfraGuard, which is where a regular American citizen is an FBI informant. In addition to all those government sectors, Project Bluebird would also have contact with the Secretary of Defense, aka the Department of Defense, or the acronym DOD. Project Bluebird was heavily interested in the research and developing of ESP, or extrasensory perception. 
this ESP research involved, and I quote, one, detailed research into the use of various drugs for subconscious isolation purposes. And was for, again, I quote, five, helping in the ESP or SSP research program. I am not entirely certain if that is an S or an E, and I will get back to that in just a bit. However, in Project Bluebird, it was stated multiple times there was heightened activity and interest in subconscious isolation techniques. And on one of those pages, it also stated they needed to locate an amoral and unethical psychologist to make the program a success. The goal of the subconscious isolation was to mind control and personality alter the subjects in order to control them during and after. Keep in mind the after part, after the interrogation sessions. They stated they would use drugs and gases and hypnotherapy and post-hypnotic mind control called post-H suggestion in the project proposal documents. The inception documents of Project Bluebird originally requested for there to be two teams of these interrogation teams of three people for subconscious isolation research for Project Bluebird, where in addition to the subconscious isolation practices to mind control a subject through various programming techniques, they also mentioned a sleep inducing machine to be part of the program and the use of sodium A or P, which is sleep inducing agents, to be concealed in normal commonplace items such as candy, cigarettes, liquor, wines, coffee, tea, beer, gum, water, aspirin tablets, common medicine, coke, and toothpaste. I am assuming that is coke as in coca-cola, but hey, maybe it's coke as in crack cocaine. I don't know at this point in time. I'd have to research more to find out. If you know, Hey, post it in the comment below. So ultimately, a successfully mind-controlled subject, in my humble opinion, based on my research and observations, would look, act, and behave just like Corey Good does today. And as a result of the program, they would have the kinds of symptoms Corey complains about having, and they would exhibit the exact same types of bad behaviors that Corey is becoming rather publicly known for now in addition to his tall bluebird claims. And again, you can read the declassified documents of Project Bluebird yourself by following the link in the description box below. The key things to know about Project Bluebird, aside from the obvious comparison fact that Corey is known very well for his bluebird alien friends that he calls blue avians, which is still a bluebird, is that bluebird used illicit drugs, unethical hypnotherapy techniques, amoral hypnotists, amoral psychologists, and abuse the subjects in order to mind control them through performing experiments for subconscious isolation, aka mind control, for post-hypnotic control, which is to still be in full control of the subject long after the experimentations and interrogations were complete. These teams of people that did these illicit things were again called interrogation teams. And from my reading of the project materials, it also sounds like the interrogation team members were also lab rat subjects for their own experiments, along with other test subjects. So once again, Corey regularly publicly claims he was regularly made to be a part of interrogations, which he is likely referring to being part of a Project Bluebird style interrogation team and or lab rat test subject thereof. It's also really important to remember subconscious isolation, because as we get more into the neuroscience section of this video, the subconscious is often notably associated with dreams and dreamlike states. Now back to the S or the E conundrum in the Project CIA Bluebird documents. I am unclear if the Bluebird document reads SSP or ESP, at number five due to the super poor quality of the legibility of the typed letters. Now originally I thought it was SSP as it looks like it would be the crappiest old school typewriter S to me. However, ESP is mentioned in a few different locations in the Bluebird documents near this and it might just be a really horrible image of an E. If it's an E, it would stand for ESP, Extrasensory Perception Research. 
If it's an S, I got to wondering, is that SSP as in secret space program? Or maybe it stands for something else. So I began looking around the web to see what else SSP might stand for within the military and government branches. And I came across a section of the Department of Defense, the DOD, that is titled SSP. And the acronym stands for Scientific Services Program. If I understand it correctly, it's where requests for services to contract are made of the SSP, Department of Defense Branch for Experimental Research, which may include projects like and this is their own example, and I quote, neural network-based target identification, which means in simple English for the rest of us, reading a person's specific brainwave pattern in order to target them. So in short, the types of projects proposed to the scientific services program of the Department of Defense must often be for experiments targeting brain research, aka neuroscience, or other similar types of neuro or nervous system scientific research. The SSP division of the Department of Defense sounds like it will then put together the project planners with scientists and teams of people capable and able to execute the proposed project with the Department of Defense basically being a middleman and possibly, I don't know without further investigation, funding and or use of that research as well. So regardless to if it's ESP or SSP in the Project Bluebird document, I think Corey's actual SSP program that he was a part of is actually a scientific services SSP program and not a secret space SSP program. And I'll be showing the part of the brain, the insula, that hypnotists use to make people think that time is different than what it actually is. I also want to very briefly point out Project Artichoke. Project Artichoke is another MKUltra subproject, and it is often associated with or presented in conjunction with Project Bluebird proposals. And I'm not going to get into Project Artichoke as I haven't read much about it, but one thing that is really interesting to note about Project Artichoke is that an artichoke looks just like the pineal gland pinecone symbology used as statues and etc by religious and cult type practices around the world and it was another program used for special interrogation purposes i'm guessing project artichoke has a bit more of a focus on the pineal gland and related experimentation of such with neuroscience next up we have mk ultra itself the mother program of project bluebird mama mama and the program Corey Good directly claims being in mk ultra again you may read the 20,000 ish pages related to mk ultra yourself by visiting the blackvault.com and downloading the freedom of information act obtained cia files so what does mk ultra actually stand for in Michael F. Bell's book, The Invisible Crime, Illegal Microchip Implants, and Microwave Technology and Their Use Against Humanity, Mr. Bell states the following on page 8 about MKUltra. He says, Known as Project MKUltra, the MK stands for Mind Control. Ultra describes breaking the code. So, literally, this represents breaking or conditioning of the human mind. Now, after I read that particular sentence, I was like, whoa, now I understand why I'm often entering or rewriting codes in dream visions and why I'm performing the math of the universe in them. In some dream visions, I'm performing these calculations so fast that my brain can't even keep up with what I'm doing while my hands are a blur just entering codes. And I am definitely not a mathematician in waking states, so this isn't because I'm a math genius with math wizarding degrees or anything. Some days I struggle with adding 2 plus 2. However, in dream states, I can perform math calculations like nobody's business, and it's a heart connection, or more accurately, a connection to source love. So it is pure love that is actually performing these rapid calculations 
in dream states. And love is what is reprogramming or programming in new codes, which then funnel in and become my waking state experiences. Now, during 2017, I emailed some of my math of the universe and similar rapid code calculation dream visions to Corey Good. One of the dream visions notably associated with programming codes was emailed to him August 7th of 2017, respectively titled Watermelon Advanced Mathematics of the Universe Technology. And this dream vision appears to have been turned into a derivative work by Corey in combination with another dream vision emailed to him a month prior on July 8th of 2017, respectively titled Forest and Glyph Kisses Portal. These two dream visions in particular and their associated data and information appear to have been used by Corey as part of his alleged mega update that he posted January 12th of 2018 on his sphere-being-alliance.com website. In Corey's alleged mega update, he notably claims he traveled off-world with his alien friends on December 16th of 2017. Now this is an important date to note because this is the same date of the off-world marriage dream that he loves to publicly defame me for to hundreds of thousands of people and for which he never had a problem with it until after I wanted remedy and attribution for he and his associates' use of my dream vision materials. Now, in Corey's alleged mega update, he discusses hieroglyphics as being a mixture of a hyperdimensional form of mathematics. In general, Corey Good's mega update appears to have used and or misused about 20 of my approximate 500 dream visions that I sent to him during 2017. These instances were cited with specificity for Corey Good to legally respond to in my pre-litigation affidavit complaint that he received on or about April 20th of 2018, and for which Corey Good has avoided and evaded responding to the complaint for approximately 20 months now. In civil matters of law, silence is an admission of guilt where circumstances are such that one ought to speak and does not. See Harmon versus Mifflin County, 1996. Now let's get back to Mr. Bell and MK Ultra. Now briefly about Mr. Bell. He is the victim of the very serious crime of being organized stalked and non-consensually surgically implanted with microchips. Mr. Bell's organized stalkers would invade his home, drug him, kidnap him, perform illegal surgeries, and they would wear masks in order to try and trick Mr. Bell into thinking they were aliens. Fortunately, Mr. Bell was born with the gift of having a photographic memory, so he was able to retain and recall many things that other victims of this type of crime would not be able to recall. He also provided ample x-rays of his brain and the various parts of his body showing multiple implanted foreign objects. So basically, Mr. Bell seems to be a victim of non-consensual MKUltra type microchipping type experiments. So Mr. Bell continues on on page eight, describing MK Ultra as follows. And again, I quote, This program was covert, illegal human experimentation through a variety of techniques using drugs and various forms of human behavior modification. The CIA could not only put thoughts into the mind and create false memories, but also had the ability to erase specific memories and make the individual forget certain events or permanently change basic thought patterns. LSD-25 was one of the many drugs used on subjects in these illegal experiments. These techniques were used on unwitting subjects, American citizens from every race, age, social, economic status, and even its own military. So in short, MKUltra itself is a broad spectrum, illicit and covert mind control program that performs surgical implants along with using illicit drugs, hypnosis, neuroscience, unethical doctors, and abuse of test subjects in a variety of experiments targeting mind and body control of animals, birds, likely bluebirds, or human lab rats. 
all of the MK Ultra experimentations were designed for what they called behavior modification, which is essentially personality splitting the test subject in order to mind control them and then make them forget everything that happened in the covert lab and forget where they were and who abused them and why. The last CIA covert program I'm going to talk about here is the MyLab program, which is another program that Corey directly claims being in. Now, MyLab stands for Military Abductions and is also part of the MK Ultra programs. And the MyLab program is written about and also contained within the CIA's declassified 20,000-ish MKUltra pages as obtained and published online at theblackvault.com. I still have to do a lot of research regarding MyLabs. However, I have read some about MyLabs as they relate to the MKUltra Freedom of Information Act documents. Now, those documents were heavily researched and written about by Dr. Helmut Lemur, if I'm saying that right, and his wife, Marion Lemur, during 1999 in their book titled My Labs, Military Mind Control and Alien Abduction, and that I recently purchased, but I still need to have time to sit down and read it. However, in their online journal, Dr. Lemur shared some of he and his wife's MyLab book research and findings. Dr. Lemur is an atmospheric scientist who works on various space projects and researches and writes articles regularly on these types of topics. Now, what I currently understand about MyLab is it's basically more of the same types of things as Project Bluebird and is another aspect to the Mama Mind Control MK Ultra. However, MyLab has the added specific purpose of making the human lab rat test subject think they are having alien contact and off-world experiences rather than what they are actually having an illicit military abduction experience where the perpetrators are notably military, CIA, and other similar black operation programs ran by humans, not aliens, and the experimented subjects are often notably and strategically surgically implanted with microchips for psychological and physical control of the subject regardless to if they are willing or unwilling participants. My labs are essentially targeted individuals, aka victims, that are more notably associated as being an interrogation subject by way of abduction, which is why the program is named Military Abductions rather than Military Volunteers. In contrast to My Labs, Project Bluebird's interrogation teams sound more like they may have been more of a consensual experimentation by the human lab rats for mind control exploration, whereas my labs seem to be more notably abducted and likely used for experimentation against their will. And they are also being tricked to think it's aliens doing all this stuff. The more I read about these illicit MK Ultra and interconnected military programs, along with advanced technologies being publicly acknowledged and available, it seems a vast majority of alien abductions, ET encounters, and even UFO sightings are more likely to just be advanced military tech toys working with mind control frequencies, electromagnetics or otherwise, and where military or political interest humans are exploring mind and body control of willing and unwilling American citizens using advanced technologies. Now, in Dr. Lemur's online journal, he discusses implant technology as being notably developed after World War II. He discusses the case of a New Zealand woman that he has direct contact with named Janine Jones. She was illegally implanted with microchips the day she was born in 1949. The doctors at Lover Hut Hospital, gotta love that hospital name, Lover Hut, implanted Mrs. Jones as a newborn baby with multiple chips via psychosurgery by drilling into her tiny baby skull and illegally placing the implants. Mrs. Jones's biological parents were military people 
but she was adopted by another set of parents in the military, and the adoptive father was also a prominent politician and chief justice of Western Samoa. Her illegal implants were placed in the cavities of her head near the cochlea of both her ears, and another was placed in her brain's frontal lobe by way of going up her nose. Now these two implant locations are of great importance because one, the first set of implants in the cochlea region of the brain, which is respectively located near the ears on both sides of the head, the cochlea regions are important because they are involved with the voice to skull patented frequency technology and the mental health disorder of dementia, which Corey Good publicly claims to have. Now, the cochlea area of the brain is connected with the brain's hallucination networks that are notably defined by the temporal poles and the temporal lobes of the brain, which significantly impact human behavior and are a significant factor in the mental health disease of dementia. Two, the second implant location up Mrs. Jones's nose and placed into the cortex area of her brain is also of great importance because this area of the brain is notably associated with subjects being mind controlled via hypnosis. The cortical region of the brain respectively located near a person's forehead is also said to be elevated in those with traumatic brain injury or TBI, which Corey also claims to suffer from TBI. Now the cortex is also highly interconnected with the hallucination networks of the brain. The cortex also regulates the amygdala, which is associated with PTSD, another mental health issue Corey claims having. Implants up the nose are apparently a regular practice used by neurosurgeons today, and I'll be going more into detail on that as it relates to the brain in the next video, along with discussing some of the associated patented technologies and the basics of electronic frequencies as they relate to the brain, aka neuroscience, and our sleep states, mind control, and the human body nervous system. Now. Further on in Dr. Lemur's online article, he goes on to say that Mrs. Jones has x-rays of her brain that verify the presence of these implants. And these x-rays were then analyzed by Dr. Richard Thompson from England, who made the following statement, and I quote, Lateral projection shows a foreign object implanted in the frontal lobe directly adjacent to the nasal passages. This object is most probably a radio transmitter. Interference in blood circulation and spreading over large areas of the brain. Concentrated in the frontal lobes and in particular around the foreign object. It is likely that this blood flow impairment is the result of radio frequency emanating from the transmitter. This, in turn, causes depletion in oxygen levels and reduced nutrient supply to these areas of the brain, where changes in neurological activity are inevitable. Note in the passage, Dr. Thompson of England states that the implants are emitting radio frequencies and that it is probably a radio transmitter. These two key observations are really important because the brain is an electrochemical organ that also emits its own radio type frequencies called oscillations that are also measured in units called Hertz. Now most people are familiar with these electrical brainwave frequencies being referred to as alpha, beta, delta, theta, and so on and so forth. Now the brain's electrical frequencies can be altered with the admittance of alternate frequencies that can in turn elicit behavior changes and various physical responses in the body of the targeted subject. As you recall, behavior changes are the entire purpose of MKUltra and the subprojects like MyLab and Project Bluebird type programs for ongoing control of the test subject called behavior modification which is accomplished through interrogation and subconscious isolation, experimentation, and practices. 
Some of these electronic-based mind control technologies were notably explored in CIA MKUltra Subproject 94, which is also cited by Dr. Helmut Lemur, and is of important note because it was specifically about the exploration and control of subjects with microchipping. One of Subproject 94's document, dated November 22nd of 1961, cited the successful implantation and use of microchips to control various species of animals with remote conditioning, and that they wanted to further the research for H application, which is likely the word human that they blacked out, and they were looking to further research into human application and human conditioning or human mind control. And in support of that, Mr. Lemire states, and I quote, there exists a research proposal for the same subproject where the CIA proposed secret field studies on humans in the 1960s. Dr. Lemire then points out after the inception of these types of projects that the first public alien abduction cases then began to start showing up like the Betty and Barney Hill abduction case. According to Wikipedia, Barney and Betty Hill were an American couple who claimed they were abducted by extraterrestrials in a rural portion of the state of New Hampshire from September 19th to September 20th, 1961. It was the first widely publicized report of an alien abduction in the United States. The reality is, most alleged alien types of experiences or abductions are likely nothing more than staged MyLab or military abduction experiences implemented by a bunch of super badly behaved humans, military men and women, human scientists, and advanced techie people, aka our brainiacs, simply experimenting with drugs and electronics and all sorts of other super advanced gadgets and gizmos for mind control and brain modification of willing and unwilling subjects. Ultimately, if all goes according to their nefarious plans, they get to have a shiny new flesh and blood human to literally remote control Hello, with all their advanced friend. techie toys. And with the use of neuroscience, drugs, hypnosis, How and super you? advanced frequency toys, it's fairly easy to get a human lab rat test subject Goodbye. to believe they are having an alien experience instead of what they're actually having, which would be an abusive military abduction experimentation experience. Now, I blogged a dream about this type of abduction attempt experience against me where the corporate boys, lab doctors, and other similar experimentation crews and Corey Good in disguise were seeking to obtain my permission via dream states to abduct me for their illicit my lab type programs. I told them no and had help from other awake and aware individuals in this particular experience. Now I blogged this dream vision July 13th of 2018 and titled it Borg Ship Laser Scan Death Threats and you can read it by following the link in the write up below. I remind everyone that Corey Good regularly states contact with his alien friends begins in dream states. This is likely because neuroscience and the illicit mind control programs Corey claims to have been in and the associated patented technologies developed toward DARPA and other three plus letter intelligence agencies are able to invade the dream states through things like brain mapping, illegal chipping, and the use of mind control program frequencies that not only impact the brain's electrical frequencies but also impact dream states through the use of electromagnetic oscillations. In short, the brain is like a radio transmitter and receiver, and each human brain has its own unique radio channel for direct broadcast reception and communication purposes. Briefly regarding the patented mind control technology that I will be discussing further in the next video as it relates to Corey Good and his public claims, there is a lot of advanced technology that is now in the public awareness and readily available for researching online, even that usually shows mind control technologies being used in mass consumption to include 5G, chemtrails, and the ever popular voice to skull tech, or V2K, and our regular humble TVs and PC monitors and more. I will get into the basics of some of the more notable patents after the brain neuroscience section as they will make more sense after that. Many of these patented technologies directly relate to neuroscience 
and can be used to cause targeted individuals, commonly known as a TI, to hallucinate or alter their behaviors from great distances. So even without a person having been or being a direct MKUltra MyLab or Project Bluebird mind-controlled victim, a targeted individual can still be targeted by the deep state for behavior modifications with patented technology frequencies to hallucinate an alien experience, and I will get more into that in the coming videos. Now, since it is technically illegal and a crime for our military and government to practice non-consensual experiments on humans in general, and especially on its own American citizens, it is much easier for the black operation programs to abduct humans and American citizens if they agree to be abducted and experimented upon. Thus, enter James Corey Good and his alleged alien stories of eight foot plus tall bluebirds and Corey Good's alleged Mayan alien friends who just happen to look exactly like humans and who will abduct people to their supposed Hello, spaceship lab in order to further mess with the targeted individual in order to wipe their memories of the Bluebird or My Lab black operation military style experiment that was performed Goodbye. unlawfully against them. And, of course, no clandestine crime is complete without the hot, sexy, blonde alien women who are princesses or priestesses wanting to merge with human males everywhere and where the unwitting male who agrees will get to be the lucky, or more accurately, unlucky, MyLab program experiment victim. Many alleged spiritual teachers like Corey Good and David Wilcock in the alien New Age field promote the negative side effects of these patented mind control frequency technologies as being <gasps> ascension symptoms. In the coming video, I will show in more detail how these alleged ascension symptoms are actually negative side effects of the illicit mind control frequency technologies being broadcast to the TI brain, targeted individual's brain, and or nervous system with the specific purpose to modify that person's behavior and for which the CIA MKUltra program has already stated they've mastered behavior modification in Subproject 94 during 1961 and that they were seeking to further develop the human application of these already successfully applied mind and body control techniques. The last thing I'm going to point out is in Cosmic Disclosure Season 7 Episode 4, Corey Good and David Wilcock explain their public methods of indoctrination of the masses, where they discuss about the brain being implanted along with the use of the voice-to-skull technology. They notably go on to state around the 25-minute mark that these black operation programs are marketed and advertised to the public right out in the open, while things are being manipulated from the background. So I find this very interesting. Everybody thinks that if there was an alien invasion that we'd be so much worse off than what's actually happening. But what they're actually saying is the worst way that this could be happening to us is what's already happening, which is that they work behind the scenes, they advertise out in the open, they put the all-seeing eye in the pyramid on the dollar bill. We never really know that they exist, but everybody kind of worries that there might be a monster under the bed but they don't get the full proof. And that this actually allows them to do more than the mass alien invasion scenario. Isn't that interesting? Well, we can bring that to a more earthly scenario. What if uh, there was a country that was uh, one that we didn't want to go toe to toe with in a war? We are gonna have more results by infiltrating them and uh, using intelligence and we've done regime change many times using those methods sure and uh, if we came in with tanks and all that the people may mobilize and come together all against us so that is not the best way to cause regime change and it's the same with these beings they uh, they've done this to many planets and they know how to do it they know how to well do you also think that a lot of the people who are working in this compartmentalized secret programs that they would perhaps not do their jobs and that a lot of the infrastructure that the negative uses wouldn't be there if those people actually knew that they were working for reptilians that literally appear like the biblical Satan. 
Absolutely not. There are, for the most part, the people that are doing the work in these programs are positive people. They think they're inventing things that are going to help the planet or help protect the planet. That's what they've been told. That's the briefing they have received. So they're putting positive energy into a, a what they think is a positive outcome, but they're being misled. This is exactly what Corey Good and David Wilcock are doing. They're openly and publicly promoting and advertising my lab or military abduction type experiences and the my lab programs right out in the open. But they present it as an ascension experience with hot, sexy aliens and bluebirds rather than it being a frequency broadcasted hallucination experience and likely followed up with a military abduction and illegal surgeries and implantation with perverted and twisted humans in covert and clandestine military labs or similar places. Next video, we will be delving into the brain science, aka neuroscience, connected with these lovely covert CIA mind control programs. That is extreme sarcasm. And in particular, how the neuroscience relates to Corey Good and his publicly and legally self-proclaimed mental and physical health issues, all of which Corey Good will still need to legally prove in a court of law as actually having, along with proving he actually has been in these illicit CIA mind control type programs that he claims. The main reason why I believe Corey was in these programs and still is in these programs as an ongoing interrogation subject, aside from the evidence I am presenting in this series, is because of what I have seen in dream states and because I have seen enough of my dreams literally play out in waking states. I generally know which part of Corey and Dave's stories are bunk and which parts of their stories are more likely true. So be sure to subscribe to Deprogrammer channel, click that notification bell, like and share. Thank you for watching and listening and stay tuned for part two, Corey Good, Mental Health Claims, Neuroscience and Patented Electromagnetic Mind Control Technology. This is your host, Ari Stone, signing off. <laughs>